Elon Musk will buy XRP from holders at price of $40,000 overnight. U.S. Representative Brad Sherman recently advised the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, to go after crypto exchanges that supported Ripple's XRP token. However, in a recent interaction with Fox Business journalist, Eleanor Tourette Sherman made another claim against the token. Welcome to the Finance Up channel. If you liked this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. Do you think the analysts are right about XRP? Write the answers in the comments. Giving away 500 XRP at the end of the week. One random subscriber will receive XRP coins. Take a look at the instructions in the comments section. All you need to do is write the word XRP, watch the video to the end, to like and subscribe. Will we finally see the documents for William Hinman's speech in 2018, for which the SEC has been fighting for a long time so that they would not end up with Ripple and become public? The documents were transferred to Ripple, but remain classified to the public. Lawyer Phelan believes that the judge will declassify any document, including Hinman's documents, only depending on whether she relied on him when making her decisions. Hinman declared Bitcoin and Ethereum not securities. Although he did not talk about XRP during the speech, Ripple believes that the agency discussed XRP during the preparation of the speech. Notably, the SEC and Ripple have officially filed sealed briefs with responses to the brief judgment, and many expect the parties to refer to Hinman's documents in their responses, but that may not be the case. James K. Phelan shared his opinion on the disclosure of Hinman's documents and the opportunity to see how the parties refer to excerpts from the documents in their respective response summaries. I have some thoughts about deadlines regarding Hinman's documents, motions for summary judgment and unresolved issues of secrecy. Instead of typing a long topic, I wrote them in an attached document. Three big issues remain unresolved. Petitions for a simplified decision. Expert challenges. Daubert petitions. Problems with the classification of expert reports, Hinman documents and other materials referred to by the SEC and Ripple. Phelan said he doesn't think the summary judgment response summaries will refer to excerpts from Hinman's documents. According to the lawyer acting for Ripple, if the defendants refer to the drafts of Hinman's speech in 2018, the SEC will edit such links with reference to parts of Hinman's documents. I don't think we'll see references to Hinman's papers in the following responses. To the extent that Hinman's documents are mentioned, I think the SEC will edit these links as they have done in the past, he said. In addition, Phelan also commented on the classification of other undisclosed documents, including expert opinions and materials referred to by the parties in their petitions. The lawyer said that he also does not think that U.S. District Judge Annalisa Torres will rule on all outstanding issues of classification soon after the parties file an objection to the joint requests for classification on January 9, 2023. The presiding judge in Ripple v. SEC lawsuit will not approach the rest of the case using this approach. According to Filanu, Judge Torres will declassify any document, including Hinman's document, only depending on whether she relied on him when deciding on petitions for summary trial. If a judge relies on a document in his decision, this document is, automatically, considered a judicial document, and then it will be disclosed, Phelan said. He also expressed his opinion on how Judge Torres can make his decision and declassify the documents in the case. The lawyer acting for Ripple noted that Judge Torres would work in the opposite direction, first drawing up a summary judgment and indicating any documents she relied on, including classified and redacted ones. However, other documents that Judge Torres did not rely on in her decision in a simplified manner will be discussed on whether the documents should remain classified, Phelan added. According to Phelan, Judge Torres had previously used this approach in the Goldman Sachs case, in which there were also closed disputes and challenging petitions for a summary judgment. David Schwartz, chief technology officer of the blockchain company Ripple, believes that Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren may be right when it comes to regulating cryptocurrencies. It's not an awful position to work with. At least it agrees that regulations need to change and that it is important to get crypto regulation right. In a recent article published by the Wall Street Journal, Warren argues that cryptocurrency could eventually destroy the economy if there is not proper oversight. Although the senator acknowledges that cryptocurrencies can potentially make the financial system more inclusive, she also points to the fact that history is littered with all sorts of fraudulent financial schemes that were advertised by criminals and charlatans. 
Warren argues that the heads of crypto projects that violate the law are no different from other financial instruments, so the Ministry of Justice should use all its strength. Warren also dealt a blow to companies engaged in the mining of cryptocurrencies, which load the energy system and increase greenhouse gas emissions. She stressed that the cryptocurrency should be subject to the same rules as other financial sectors. On Twitter, Schwartz wrote that this is not a terrible position to work in. It's not a terrible position to work in. At the very least, she agrees that the rules need to change and that it is important to ensure proper regulation of cryptocurrencies. Warren has long been one of the leading crypto skeptics of Congress. In a September interview, the progressive MP called the cryptocurrency unreliable, destructive, and dangerous. In early April, Warren compared buying Bitcoin to buying air. According to James K. Phelan, Judge Torres can make one big written decision on unresolved issues of the trial, including petitions for summary trial based on precedents. Ripple General Counsel Stuart Alderati, who shared the news about the historic milestone reached in the lawsuit, believes that Ripple has fought well over the past two years. In December 2020, the SEC filed a lawsuit against Ripple and two of its executives, alleging that the $1.3 billion sale of XRP was an unregistered securities offering. Alderati mentioned that the summaries of the responses would mark Ripple's final submission in his bid for the court to rule in her favor. He says that Ripple is proud of the protection it has put up on behalf of the entire crypto industry, noting that the company has always played fair with the court. In a 62-page court document, the SEC argues that it is entitled to a summary judgment because the defendants did not object to the substantial fact that the XRP sales constitute an offer of an investment contract under Section 2 of 1 of the Securities Act of 1993. In addition, the SEC provided three facts proving that the Ripple XRP offer is an investment contract. According to the agency, Ripple and its executives did not dispute that the blockchain company received $2 billion from investors in exchange for XRP. In addition, the defendants also did not dispute the fact of establishing general entrepreneurship in the Howey test. The agency noted that the defendants' efforts linked the fortunes of XRP investors to each other, citing an excerpt from a memo by lawyer John Deaton and Mikai Curiae, which states that Ripple's loss will harm investors. In addition, the SEC argued that Ripple did not dispute another important aspect of Howey's test, the expectation of profit from the efforts of others. The defendants made an avalanche of public statements indicating that they would take steps to increase the value of XRP. Partly because of Ripple's giant pile of XRP, potential and actual investors realized that Ripple was financially forced to do just that, the agency said. According to the SEC, Ripple's opposite argument is that many XRP investors did not consider buying a crypto asset as an investment in a blockchain company. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission said that this argument does not comply with the law, since the main question should be whether Ripple has forced potential investors to expect profits from the efforts of others. None of the defendant's arguments to the contrary precludes a decision in a simplified procedure. The main tactic of the defendants is to reject the controlling precedent with the help of fictitious tests, confuse the facts and shift the blame to the SEC, the securities regulator said in its response. Meanwhile, Ripple has also filed an edited response to the SEC's objection to its motion for summary trial. In an edited response, Ripple reiterated that its motion for summary judgment should be granted because the SEC cannot prove that any XRP offer was a sale of an investment contract. The SEC nominally protests, claiming that it has found several cases where the main components of the investment contract discussed in the HOI were missing. But this statement does not stand up to criticism, the SEC simply mischaracterizes its cases. Ultimately, the SEC cannot point to any case of discovery of an investment contract without the main components specified in the HOI, Ripple noted. They identify three reasons as the basis for their argument. First, the SEC summary confirms that it cannot prove an investment of money. Secondly, the Securities and Exchange Commission's report also confirms that it cannot prove a common enterprise. Third, then XRP holders will not reasonably expect to profit from the defendant's efforts. The current price of XRP for today you can see yourself on the screens, and the trading volume for 24 hours is $1,294,436,065 US dollars. We are updating our XRP price in US dollars in real time. XRP has dropped 4.
0.08% in the last 24 hours. Do you think XRP will be able to win the court and restore its former price? Write the answers in the comments. That's it for today. Thank you for watching this video to the end. If you liked it, then don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel.